This is the Generative Commons call on Wednesday, August 25th, 2021. Hank, nice to see you. Um, and, and brief aside, uh, Hank, are you familiar with the Vlog Brothers, John and Hank Green? No, I'm not. So they're one of my heroes uh, in the world. They, they make countless videos. Uh, and now they've got a SciShow and a bunch of others. They're doing science shows. They're doing a bunch of other stuff. And they have this, this, uh, this cliche, this routine they do where at the end of every one of their normal old fashioned calls, they say, Hank, I'll see you on Tuesday or John, I'll see you on Tuesday, right? And so when I, when I greet you, I'm, I'm always thinking of John Green saying, Hank, I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. So, so Stacy is talking about a, a game show she is describing that would operate in this future that we're, that we're envisioning. And, and Stacy, I'm, I'm an, I, so what's interesting is that, let me work backwards back into your idea. Uh, you've, you've heard me use the leaf cutter ant analogy before, I think, right? No, oh, if but not, I kind of think I know what that is, like carrying okay. little pieces. <laughs> so, so if you haven't, I'm, I'm surprised because we've been on so many calls together um, that, and I've been, I've been bringing this up uh, relatively often, but uh, so leaf cutter ants can't actually digest leaves. So why the hell are they up in trees, biting off chunks of leaves, dropping them to the ground, carrying them into the nest by the bazillions? Why, what is, what is going on? Well, what happens is they carry them down into the, into the ant nest, into the ant hill, um, and they hand them off to a subset of that genus and species of ant that is busy chewing up the leaves, not eating them, chewing them up with their spit and then putting them on a fungus. And, and leaf cutter ants are also known as farmer ants. They're one class of farmer ants. There's another class of farmer ants that farms aphids, believe it or not. They tend aphids and then squeeze the aphids who poop a nectar that the, that the ants all eat. It's a very strange relationship. Um, and, then, and then they defend the aphids against spider attack, beetle attack, other animals that like aphids, they defend them, right? Because this is their food source. Anyway, back to the, back to the ant uh, hill. So in the middle of the ant hill is this fungus which is a mycelial kind of thing that the ants basically put, put new leaves on and then, and, then, and then they inject the new leaf matter with a little bit of the fungal mold, which grows. And then it, and this metabolizes the leaf matter and oozes a nectar that all the ants eat. In my 23 years of curating this brain thing, I feel like a lone ant at the fungus face. I feel like I'm busy like making the fungus bigger and trying to make it nutritious and putting and getting antibiotics and, 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 and like keep, I keep bringing like leaves every day. And I would love, I would love A, to be feeding the fungus alongside a whole bunch of other people. And I don't care if they're using the brain to feed the fungus or kumu or rome or whatever. I want us to feed the same damned fungus. And not that it's a uniform fungus, it's a fungus that preserves each of our points of view, blah, 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 very ogm -y kind of infrastructure for the ideas. But then, and that's still like the base thought, but who cares, fungus? Well, from that fungus could grow a whole variety of other fruiting bodies or organisms that one of which might look like a vlog or a podcast, one of which might look like a game show, one of which might look like a book, one of which might look like a movie or, or a, some kind of a game, <clears throat> you know, live action game or whatever, all of which would be connected through to the same fruiting, the, the same basically nourishing network <clears throat> um, of ideas, points of view, facts, elements, et cetera. And then as each of these different entities was throwing off more episodes, more questions, more facts, those just get woven into the big fungus, right? And so, and so your game show idea feels like a really great example of one of the kinds of things that ought to live on top of and nourishing the big fungus. <laughs> on top of and nourishing. Yeah, like, uh -huh. so like I see something like take Klaus's project. Let's say there's a video about Klaus's, Klaus's project. Now I have a small piece of something that I wanna do with children that would be related that could be a sprout because it happened like a recipe that I make in the morning happens to use five, you know, spinach and cheese that a local farmer's market could, you know, uh, put together. Right. That could bring in a business person that wants to locally start boxing it and delivering it. That connects the people. But if we can see it as shows in a clear way, not just going on YouTube and looking for something, right. but to have it organized 
to have our songs organized in the in the song library. Um, you know, when I went on, I didn't know who your wife was until yesterday. Oh, and no. I had yeah. no idea. But she sent out an, an email to OGM and I like to support people and it was your wife. So I went. Uh -huh. I can't <laughs> tell you. I'm like, why am I in Jerry's meetings? I should be in hers. <laughs> 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 even, even coming on to like the songs i've been working with a program where every day i meditate on a song or whatever yes. song that is that's the song that i do like it's like a physical fitness kind of thing but and i've been listening to change for play non-stop in the background and my mood has i definitely see a difference wow uh, you know yeah. so i forgot why i brought that up but well, oh can, yeah go ahead <laughs> You should what? I'll get to you. should you. join FMXC, the Flux Mindset Explorers Club, which is her mailing list, which is different from OGM. It's not chatty like us, um, but but that, that way that way you'll stay in touch with what she's doing, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I would love that because honestly, six years ago, I had that Flux Mindset and I made a big decision. So that's really, whatever she's doing, I do want to, cool. I would like to get that information. I love that. I love that. That's hilarious. Um, and and what you one of the things you just said really sticks in my head also because the artifacts on the surface, uh, whether it's a game show or a or a podcast, give people structure to look at this big thing and make it manageable, make it accessible, etc. But once they start peeking under the hood, they start seeing that oh crap, this actually leads to the other things, and so. On your episode, on your episode where you uh, do combat on you do like you do a top organic chef episode where you have recipes, then that you could have a link that says, "Hey, if you'd like to learn about healthy soil and try to make your soil healthy in your backyard, here's a thread that goes over there." And it's more than just a "Hey, here's some for additional reading. Here's some links." It's actually connected through uh, through the root system into that bet that set of knowledge and communities and stuff like that. Um, or if you wanted to go into business, uh, you know, create an open, open a pop-up restaurant using this recipe. Here's how to go do that. And here's some resources and people, et cetera. Well, there's one other thing that's really important about this. And I, I think I have to change the name, even if I call it a show game or something, because it really does sound very frivolous. Um, but we keep talking about how people have to learn a new mindset. And there, and to me, this is a way to train systems thinkers how to behave like system thinkers, because we're you know we're not immune from what we've been socialized to think and right. do. <clears throat> right. Um, if I can, I'm going to share the link to your sh show with Hank. Oh, Hank! Hank already is is uh, Hank. Hank. You have. Let me copy the link here and share it with you again. But you're already you already yeah. have access to the yes. document. Yes. Yes. And I'll put it back in our chat so that you can go open it if you'd like to. There we go, bink, bink, and there it is. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, okay. So, so just to just to show how topical we are being, the big fungus is in the generative commons and is an example of the generative commons. And and relative to the trust that you were referring to, Stacy. Um, Participating to feed the fungus requires some acts of trust, faith, whatever else, because um, because likely there will be predators, raiders, uh, bad actors, other sorts of things. And a tiny a, a tiny biological footnote: biologists noticed that the subspecies of ant that was busy mulching up the leaves and feeding the fungus had like a white powder all over their thorax, and they went and scraped it off and looked at it. It's a bacterium that's like an antibiotic to keep the fungus um, from getting you know, diseases. So there's, so there's a symbiotic relationship between that little bacterium and the ants and the fungus and everything else. <clears throat> and there's probably many more layers of this kind of thing going on. Go ahead. So there, there's a couple of things because this whole idea is predicated on people would be doing it because it really is their passion anyway. So for the <clears throat> same reason that people show up to some of these calls, they'd actually be doing. Now there's a greater hope that they can receive more and that it could add to you know, the benefit of the world. 
But even if it didn't, it's the journey and it's something they would want to do because it's what they love. Yep. Now, as far as bad actors, the point is once you're involved in this, when one succeeds, we all succeed because again, we're building the commons. Bad actors coming in are gonna be shut down by the culture, by the society. So that's all, I mean, Go ahead. Bad actors are not that easily shut down. So, so the, the handling bad actors is really, really important and a big deal, but it's not impossible. But, but it, I guess it we would need examples. I guess yeah. we would have to come up with, you know, and, yeah. and I wish we would do more of that. I wish we would, you know, have a call where we take an hour and we say, well, let's say we were going to do this. Where would we start? How would we do it? What would, what problems might come up? Like to do a little bit more role playing, I think might help push us along a little well, bit. Role playing would be good, but I think I think maybe what you're saying is plan making, right? In the sense of Pete Kaminsky says everything is a plan. Um, I, th I think what we need is to turn your uh, starting blueprint into a plan that has sub plans because it's a big idea. And so the big plan is like, well, here's the here's the big here's the big broad brush uh, look at what happens. But then here are small things that need to happen, which is kind of why why I asked a little bit earlier, like, so so who's the host of this? Let me go back to the naming for a second because we can brainstorm names and all that. But it might be cool to call it the show game at the end of the universe. Um, something that attracts attention, something that like, like show game translates back to game show in an interesting way. It's a clearly an intentional reversal. Okay, good. And something else that says, and it's, you know, cards against humanity is a very funny, slightly blue game. That's like, what do you mean cards against humanity? But boy, is that sticky, <clears throat> right? So you need, so, and I'm not saying show game at the end of the universe would stick, but something like that, something that, that has, that rings a little bell, that's like, hey, this is like, this is fun and irreverent, but meaningful. It's funny when you ask who should, you know, I think of Oz, I think of the, uh -huh. seriously, the Wizard of Oz, because it's almost like there had to, and it, it parallels with God. It's like there almost had to be a bigger secret, more powerful entity. Right. However, that being said, people did follow the Pied Piper. Right. When, you know, when you see a few people going, especially if they're key people, the rest will follow. And have you seen the three minute video on the first follower? No. Oh, you're gonna really like this. I know from being in the supermarket though, and standing in line when there's a problem and everybody looking at each other and staring. And then finally the first person says, can we get another cashier over here? And then, yeah, yeah, then exactly. uh, other people start speaking up or if it's a different problem, you know, kid crying. I mean, I've I've seen that for most of my life and usually I have to be the first one, which is not fun. Um, so uh, play this video later. I think it'll really resonate for well, you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, Hank, any thoughts on what we're saying? I'm just taking some notes for myself about the things that are being said. And at the same time, I'm just thinking that uh, in a lot of the calls, uh, we sort of go around in a, in a spiral and every time things get a little clearer, but still things don't get done. So I like this idea of make a plan, uh, a, simple, uh, a simple format or a template, uh, weave the world. I think that's a very serious plan. Stacy's game is a serious plan. Klaus's project is a serious plan. As Klaus is taking it uh, uh, extremely seriously, his template might be fuller than your templates at the moment. But if they have the same template, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if the things that are talked about here and the things that are talked about in uh, uh, building OGM yesterday and the things that are talked about in Free Jerry's Brain on Monday are all uh, aspects of the same thing or the aspects of several things but once they get on paper and I think yesterday mm -hmm. Pete suggested a simple Google Docs which every model can can use then people can see are we talking about one thing or are we talking about 
four things that need a, uh, a, an umbrella or, or a fundament or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've written on my list here, OGM deliverables, and that's maybe too businessy of a word. No, 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 it's a good final uh, Leave the world, find the best people for your team. That's an absolute service that, uh, that you do now for free, but you could offer it as a service. Join a generative commons, Klaus's CFS project, Stacy's project, I put on the list feed the fungus, but I, it might just be a metaphor for these. And I think there are a few more that I, I take a lot of notes, but I don't have straight at the moment. But if we sort of said, here's a simple format, not a business canvas like Klaus is using, but you know, maybe four things to, to, to fill out. Uh, the, the, objectives, technology, goal, uh, people, or something like that. And, you know, it was filled in. I think things would get a lot clearer. Um, I like that. And you, uh, I like that a lot. And you just made me think that maybe we have a new role, a new guild, a new guild that's not a guild uh, of fungus minders. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Um, who are kind of, you know, underground weaving away at, at all the things that, that are the scaffolding uh, for all these things. And, and, and so all of this ties just beautifully back into one of my complaints for the last 10 years, at least 10 years. Um, and, uh, have either of you heard me say that we are an amnesic society? Yeah. yeah. So, so one of the lessons from 23 years of using the brain, actually, let me um, da -da -da, kind of stop doing this, share a screen. Let's flop over to the brain and let's go to uh, lessons brain. And uh, so I have a thought, of course, called lessons from my brain, whatever I learned from using the brain. And the most important one to me, the biggest lesson for me is that we are an amnesic society. And because I've been feeding a memory for 23 years and very few people are, I have this experience Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, I did a video some time ago called, sorry for the beach ball, my computer is like, wait, wait a minute, you're doing too many things. <laughs> um, I, did a, I did a video saying, uh, I, I have a hunch that nobody's having the information curating experience that I'm having. I'm having this very yeah. weird, yeah. rare, unusual yeah. experience yeah. Yeah. Of, of highly functional memory that lasts as long as my life yeah. will last, yeah. right? Where it doesn't get worse, it just sort of keeps getting better and more interesting. Uh, it's shareable, but not co collaborative, right? I, I, I can share it out, but I, somebody has to send me an email that says, hey, you're missing this. And then I go and I come in here and I edit it. And it's like, that's dumb. Yeah. Um, and that's why OGM exists partly is to sort of fix this problem. Yeah. But, but I think part of what <clears throat> weaving the world and the big fungus and all that are about are creating this shared memory. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. and the, this shared memory lives in the generative commons. It's not owned by anybody. <clears throat> we want to start it. We want to create it. We want to motivate other people to build their parts of it, including people who have completely different racist, idiotic, uh, whatever, neoliberal points of view. And, and I will do my best to match what they think and why they think and, and whatever in, in the medium. Uh, but the medium needs to be separate from any individual tool. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I just want to say that, that our conversation right now and these calls about the generative commons are the generative commons is a remedy for the global amnesia, right? And, and I'm saying all this because when I raised this issue in the past, <clears throat> my, my hair has been on fire about this for 15, 10, 15 years. Nobody else particularly gives a shit. And then, and then I get into conversations. So last week I had a lovely hour with Cory Doctorow, uh, the science fiction author. And we talked about a bunch of stuff that wasn't that. But at the end, like in the last 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, and by the way, I'm doing this open global line thing and blah, blah, blah. And I think this is just my own interpretation. I think at the beginning of that conversation, it's furrowed brow, like interesting, but what? And then I, I, I hit a couple things and he was like, that's really important. Right, and that, that's where I get to. It's like it's like the moment the coin drops and people, because because I've been having this really weird experience curating the fungus, and and it makes me happy. It's durable. It actually works. I can go back and keep making things better. 
Very few people have an experience of curating even a database that just gets better, right? The Wikipedia seems to just get better. So that's one of the few great examples we have on earth. Um, and then maybe these other things, but everything else we know is a stream flowing past us. And, and, and this is another thread that I've been on for a long time is the difference between stocks and flows. So a vlog, a game show, anything with episodes, uh, even a web log that has blog posts, uh, tweets, all that, those are all flow and they're all, and we're drowning in the info torrent. That's another, let yeah. me just, uh, let me just go to that. So uh, we ha I have a, a thought that says we're drowning in the info torrent, right? <clears throat> we're drowning in email, uh, where everything is, everything is uh, flow, nothing is stock. This thing is stock. Yep. My, my brain and Wikipedia, for example, are my two favorite examples of stock. Because there's a curated thing where when you go back to a page, it's going to be more or less the same as it was. It's not fresh content, <clears throat> but yep. it's being made better slowly over time. Yeah. And on Wikipedia, where there's fresh content, it's the current events page or, you know, some new thing gets launched, uh, a new movie uh, happens and somebody starts the, 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 the page, the new page for that movie. That's where new stuff happens. But really, Wikipedia is not at all about novelty, not at all. Yeah. Um, and so, and I'm going to link, uh, I've made, I've made, as I do, I've made a link to this call. So here's the generative commons call. I'm linking it to these thoughts so that they're easy to find. Here's Amnesic Society. Uh, there we go. And, and so uh, for you guys benefit, um, every one of our Generative Commons calls is listed here under Generative Commons calls. Oh. And then for every call, um, and at some, call, some of these calls, uh, we didn't, here we go. So here's the last, last week's Generative Commons call where we talked about democracy gardens and uh, I yep. talked about I talked about the documentary Street Gang about Sesame Street yep. uh, which is which I then I then during that conversation I connected it to the documentary about Mr. Rogers called Won't You Be My Neighbor because these two are just really beautiful and they should be viewed together so I want when somebody finds this one I want them to find this one and vice versa <laughs> etc yep. so this is my act of weaving in real time as we go through our conversations, right? I'm busy editing like this. And then usually at the end of a good call, I'll have five or six open tabs and then I'll go harvest those tabs and add them to the, to the brain. I will then download the video from Zoom, upload the video to YouTube, post that video link on top of, you notice how this link doesn't have a, a YouTube video yet, but the other ones all, if I go back, these, these all have a YouTube video link, right? Because I systematically, uh, post them to YouTube openly and add the link here so somebody could go back and watch the call. Now, and I'm sorry, I, I just keep riffing on different kinds of things, but I'm making a kind of a loop to just warm up the, the territory. Um, now, what we're not doing is what Kikolab was doing a little bit, what Max uh, Harper did a little bit, which is take, to, take the transcript of these calls. And, and my Zoom account does not generate automatically any transcripts. The Thursday calls we're doing still in the collaborative next Zoom and they have the corporate account which does do the otter transcript, which is great because then we get automatically already a transcript, which we're not doing anything with right now, but at least we have it. But we could just pretty easily generate transcripts here. And then what if the transcript were, what if the timestamps in the transcript connected directly back into the video? What if we had a, a nice way of taking a sentence <clears throat> and connecting it back to the snippet where people excitedly describe the thing and you could, you could quickly go to the right place in the, in the live event that was then stored properly in the big fungus kind of thing, right? Um, and so that, that and, then, and then all of which we're seeing right now through this weird little tool called the brain, which is proprietary. What does the OGM platform actually look like? What does this look like seen through Rome research uh, in a way that's compatible with what's happening here? And then mm -hmm. how does that all bubble back to the surface so that it looks like a game show, right? Is that, is that like way too much, Stacey, or is that like- what? No, not at all. It's just so many other little pieces. Like back in 2019, when the group I was with was trying to figure out how to get people to actually go through this transcript, I wanted to use the idea of a game show, exactly how you said, but it would be, who said this? It would be like some sort of where you where people would be looking because they'd be looking for the clues and searching for the clues. Like a trivia contest. <clears throat> like a trivia contest. I mean, to me, this has implications for education. That's that's where I'm really coming from. So 
So the other fruiting body is um, is learning materials or whatever you want to call it. And I'm I'm a huge skeptic of ed tech. Edut edutainment is a word I hate. Um, I know, but it's try not to hate it so much. Try to look at the other side of it because everything has you know equal and opposite, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, yes, and and also and but also any of the above are kind of co-optable to come feed the fungus if we do this right, right? Because the, the fungus can be fed from the outside of anything. If I can, if I can watch, an, if I can watch, part of the problem with, with uh, infotainment or, or edutainment or whatever is that most of these things are closed apps with a proprietary attitude toward everything that offer no links to the inside. So things that you make, build, do, when guests inside are just not connectable to the outside, which just pisses me off. I, I'm like, yeah. like, if you paid money to be educated to build something, and then when you stop paying them at money every month, you can't take your data away, and it doesn't become a part of your own big fungus, mm -hmm. like, makes me mad. I just think that's theft, right? I agree. That, that, that's why I love the idea of the game. We would own it. It's ours. And, but the game is also is designed to feed the generative commons. The, the game's results all go back into this shared asset that needs to be curated with care because, because one of my other experiences from watching many of us mind mapping in many different tools is that really rapidly it turns into just chaos. There's just info chaos on the ground where you have six different visualizations, none of which is particularly complete, all of which are kind of different and taking a very different approach toward the issue or the thing that, that everybody thought they were talking about together. And worse, the tools are not easily connected to each other and we don't slow down the conversation enough to weave those connections and sort of make a collective sense out of what's happening. Instead, we're busy like, okay, next, what's the next thing? If I could just add one more thing, part of what's different is we wouldn't just be the creators, we would be the users. Yep. We're creating our own thing. And if we were to succeed and have this really great library of all information, everything that is, a lot of money goes into content marketing. We would be able to accept that money for them to have a t a, a, an airtime. There's, yes. nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it would be going to the commons but it would be taking money from the top instead of taking money from the bottom. So a thought, the show game at the end of the universe, I'll just name it that for a second, could be a template for how to run a show game at the end of the universe. And when I asked who's the host, it could be that the template can be picked up by any host who wants to go do this, but that when they do so, if they make any money, it has to get pooled into the generative commons or something like that. So, okay, let me... So if we could just like switch thinking, like make your mind blank. It's not so much that there's one host. Everybody's their own host. Right. The, the central part would be OGM, which feeds all the other hosts. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's... Um, so I think I'm just coming around to your idea because what I just described was anybody could become a host, but, but, it's, but every participant, and this may just be a semantic difference, for me, every participant in the show game isn't necessarily a host. For each episode, there is a host and there are a bunch of participants. It, now, anybody who felt like standing up and saying, oh, I want to run one of these myself would then become a host. They would then pick up the piece parts and go, oh, this is how it works. Here are the moving parts, which are open source. As long as I'm feeding the commons and as long as if I'm going to try to make any money, it gets fed, some per this percentage gets fed back into the generative commons, we're good. Right. Um, and, that would be cool. And the other thing is, it doesn't have to be one at a time. And that's a really important feature. It's a lot happening at once. Exactly. Totally Did agree. Did you ever watch Cupcake Wars? I, I know you I, watch a lot of these. I, I think I watched an episode or, or two of Cupcake Wars because my nieces were heavily, heavily into it a couple of years ago. And so, so we sat with them and watched them. Okay. So at the end of Cupcake Wars, the winners get to tell tell the experts what it is they need and what it is they envision. And the experts create what, so it's almost like you're giving that the amateur with the passion. And it doesn't mean you have to be an amateur, you could have a startup, but I'm saying it's not going through 
going to the people that have already achieved what they want. It's going to the people that if they had, you know, unlimited time to work on their passion, what they'd be doing. It's giving, it's really giving them the support so that they can go out and sprout new things and give it, give other people support and keep paying it forward. And one last thing. Yeah, no, you don't, we, need, to, you don't need to, you okay. can say like 10, 10 things, don't worry. There's... A lot of reprogramming to overcome. <laughs> exactly, um, exactly. So using Klaus's project as an example, it would be very interested to go, interesting to go around the virtual room and say, how could what you're doing right now what little piece could you give to that project or could you add on to everybody there? Because to me, you should be able to give something. Right. And that, and if we, if we started thinking that way, I think we would be a lot, like I know sometimes when I've said something, people are conditioned to think, oh, she wants it her way. No, no, no. It's thinking about how it will work for everyone. And that right. happens in relationships too, you know. Yeah, exactly. Why are you laughing, Hank? <laughs> no, no, no. I think I'm enjoying this very a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I enjoyed yesterday's Build OGM call a ton because yeah. it, it moved my brain forward a lot on how we actually stand up projects and see them. Because <clears throat> I had, I was thinking, okay, how do we create a bunch of projects in Markdown and put them in Massive? And we started. Mark Antoine took us directly a, 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 yeah. a totally different direction, but toward the same kind of thing. And and Pete was like, "Yep, yep, we can sort of like do that in the middle." Um, and I'm I'm excited because it, <clears throat> you know, it looks like a bunch of this stuff could materialize. And once yep. and once we start figuring out where to put stuff and how to describe it in a relatively uniform way. So that every project plan isn't like a mysterious new thing. We have a, a new document we have to untangle, yeah. but rather follows a, a format that we can understand. Um, then um, people who are interested and have a skill can come in and find their way to help, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like then we can start actually building these things out. Right, right now the fungus is mostly uh, you know an imaginary thing, and I've got a little starter. I've got a little starter data project of the export of my fungus. But but the, the the bigger thing just doesn't doesn't actually even really exist. Um, although you could say that all the stuff on GitHub and in Wikipedia and all the the loose un, loosely or unconnected data that's already in the Commons that's really useful are in fact diff, completely different un, unconnected species of of generative Commons information. Yep. And one of the projects of OGM is to go from juicy pocket of nourishing commons goodies to pocket of commons goodies and connect them, weave them, make them more useful, et cetera. So, so one of the projects I want to do early is to go to the to Tom Attlee and the uh, the wise democracy pattern language and to go to the peer, uh, peer Agaji folks and Howard Rheingold and say, hey, um, let's weave this into the generative commons in a different way from its current manifestation. And then let's instrument it in a way where it's really easy to, for people, for muggles who are trying to run a better meeting or make a better decision to, to find and use, right? And to me, that that's we're rapidly getting into corporate knowledge management when we do that, which is another realm we should be transforming, right? So, so Stacey, what you said about education completely rings for me. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. We could, we could help reinvent the education because uh, because it's you learn a ton from being one of the fungus minders, Right from 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 being at the fungus face and trying to figure out where does this fit, how does it work, who else can use it, who just used it, how do I put it here? That's absolutely a part of education. It's it's a part of collective sense making, right? Which is what we're trying to do, and that just takes me back to we're in a music society. We've been having trouble making sense of the world because we keep turning up the volume on the info torrent. We get more and more and more and more flood, and we don't have tools to connect it and weave it into something that makes sense to us. The, and the other language I was using that's not as exciting, I, mean, I don't know how exciting fungus is, but at least it's memorable, was the big quilt. Because for me, a, a patchwork quilt is another great different metaphor for a hopefully a beautiful in the end constructed uh, useful artifact made by different people from different patches. Like in a good patchwork quilt, you know, the individual patches are beautiful, but the, but the work as a whole 
is really good. Sadly, while searching for patchwork quilt images on the web, most of the ones I found have not been very beautiful. So they've been just like function, kind of functional and folksy, but but uh, very few uh, really sort of are, are, are snapping to that level of beauty. Anyway, that, that was a little frustration like two weeks ago when I was like, okay, the big quilt, how do I illustrate the big quilt? And I looked and I looked and I looked and I turned over a lot of rocks and I was like, I'm just having a hard time illustrating the big quilt. And then Pete likes the big quilt because it's, it's a human activity that makes a quilt. And the big fungus is, you know, ants together uh, at the fungus face. Um, and I kind of agree with that, but I'm still, and again, I'm still searching for naming and metaphors that, that will light people's brains on fire so they understand what these different moving parts are. And, and one of the reasons I love the fungus is that this above ground and below ground thing works for me well, where above ground, it looks like a, an apple or a mushroom, uh, a game show or a, or a podcast. Below ground, there's this world, there's the wood wide web, there's the rhizomal network, there's the fungus. These are all interlaced. There are nutrients running back and forth. And if perchance this little underground above ground thing is in the estuarial region where there's like a mix of salt water and fresh. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, there's your quilt. Um, if, if perchance this, this uh, below ground or a uh, rich kind of exchange of, of nutrients was happening in an estuary where above ground also there's this rich exchange, then we're just like rocking, right? Uh, and, and, and then metaphorically we map the components of nature to the components of the communities that are coming in, the people who want to play. Um, and then anybody can get a simple taste of it by playing with the things that are above ground. Like everybody can enjoy those and, and do those and participate and watch, just watch them. If all they want to do is like watch the series, rocking. Um, but then diving below ground is easily accessible. And there are a bunch of people around going, come on down and play with us, you know, at the fungus face. You, you may or may not find this interesting, but um, about a year ago, so again, always with the mindset of many different shows going on at once. Yeah. I, I pitched an idea. Do you, do you know Jim White Scarver? I've heard his, yes, I've been on a couple calls with him. Yeah. I think he, I think he was on uh, the team that developed HTML. Uh, possibly. I don't know about that. Well, anyway, so I, I like him very much, but he and I have very different political views. So I went to him at, with this idea for this would be a show for muggles. And it was sort of like a we the people kind of also it was, you know, coming with your best ideas. And the idea I came to him was it had to do with. Um, it, uh, what's the word? It, uh, it, citizens would own the post office. I can't think of the right words, but I mm -hmm. pitched him this whole idea and he really liked the, the idea, of, not of the show. I pitched him. I said, what do you think of this idea? Because. I wanted to see if somebody with completely different political beliefs as I would think it was a good idea the way that I did. Mm -hmm. He really loved it, couldn't find anything wrong with it. Why am I bringing this up? Oh, <laughs> because this was a way to engage the muggles. And I thought that as creating part of this show, there would be lessons built in because you have to explain what the problem is before you ask the audience to come up with their best solution. Right. So this was a way smaller version of what I'm thinking now. And it's, it was just one little arm of something that could happen. But again, I was always thinking, how do we create jobs, jobs that are creative jobs? So mm -hmm. I don't want to lose that. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I, and I'm trying to figure out how do people make a living on all different moving parts of this thing without resorting to advertising, which basically means skulking around, stealing our information, pitching us stuff we don't want, et cetera, <clears throat> which then means, okay, so other business models then would be patronage, which is perfectly legit. Patronage is great, um, but also being paid for services rendered and, and you know, doing useful work with these tools in this environment for the benefit of, for the mutual benefit of some entity, some organization and the generative commons, you know, and as long as there's like mutual benefit, uh, I think that works really well, but, but, but rethinking how people make a living is a really important part of this as well. It's just a lot of things all at once, eh? 
And, and it needs to work in a way where it's relatively intuitive to understand. Um, uh, I'm uh, Ambrose Bierce in the Devil's Dictionary. His definition of self-evident is evident only to oneself. <laughs> so this has to actually sort of be self-explanatory, but also there should be people sort of everywhere who are in the, a collaborative frame of mind who have the intention of the generative commons, which, which is how people used to learn Unix back in the day. Like you didn't want to sit down and read the Unix manual. What you did was you sat down and you turned to the dude, usually the, the, the dude next to you in the, in the computer lab. And you're like, how do I do this? And he was like, okay, here's the, you know, use a question mark, which will give you all the commands. And then here's how you do the command line for, here are the, the different options for what the grep command will, can do. And then suddenly you're a middling grep expert and you can teach the next person, right? So we just need to do that. That works, that works just fine. Social learning, learning, most learning is social. That's the it's, best, I think it, I mean, it's how totally I- Totally fun. <laughs> yeah. Contextual learning, social learning, when there's a, a mission in mind, which is which we call project-based learning, but then what we make kids do is pick a fake project. Like, oh, today you're gonna do ants, even though the kid's not like not that interested in ants, but now you're a, now you're doing project-based learning. And to me, it's like figure out what the kid's actually curious about. You know, if it's witchcraft, okay, go crazy. If it's uh if it's if it's why does a flower have petals and an arrangement, that is the path straight path to mathematics and, and art. Like God, why do we separate all this stuff so much? Because we don't want to create healthy, productive people. We want to create people that will feed the labor force. Actually, sheeple. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, sheeple is a, a, an unfortunate but great term that came up in the last couple of decades. Um, yeah. Okay, so how do we make this happen? I'll go back to uh, what I was posting earlier and what I said earlier. Uh, I think a simple one page template so that everyone who's involved in these calls can fill it out in a few minutes. Uh, I suggested four or five uh, uh, boxes. I love, I love in the box, I hate out of the box. Purpose, uh, what, why, benefit, stuff like that. People, who's involved, uh, and not who it's no, not about customers, not about the finances, but who, who wants to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, processes, uh, are there methods that help us do it? Mm -hmm. Technology, because it's going to be tech uh, driven, and uh, what makes it special or unique? Should be easy to fill that out. And if we take all of these different things, like I put a little earlier, the OG, OGM deliverables, we the world, find the best people for your team, uh, join the generative commons, uh, global amnesia, uh, community food services, uh, uh, Stacy, your game project, the big quilt, the big fungus, different other services. I mean, some of them, you could fill all of them out, Jerry, but Stacy, you could probably fill half of them out that interest you. I could fill a few out. Pete could fill all of them out. Uh, Mark Antoine, maybe uh, the half. Uh, and then we've got lots and lots of stuff which can be sifted through and see right. where the inspiration emerges. And see also where a lot of the overlaps are, which is part yeah. of my mission. My, part of my mission in the next couple of days is to yeah. is to illustrate somehow uh, the big the mosaic that came up in conversation yesterday. Yeah, like what yeah. does that mosaic look like? And so for me, the mosaic turns out to be another good metaphor because the mosaic is made of little pieces of tile, uh, either broken or shaped, but but each tile is like this little independent entity. Yeah. And for me, each project idea, that's each, each micro or tiny project idea is like a mosaic piece. Yeah. And, many of, and the more we can make the mosaic pieces serve many different projects, the better. Yeah. So, so a mosaic piece gets more valuable the yes. more different things it serves. Yeah. 
yeah, right? Exactly. And that, that's, a, that's a measure of the value of a project yeah. is like, this is really eminently reusable. This is, this is like a linchpin in the middle. It's a lubricant yeah. for, for five different problems we've been trying to solve. This little mosaic piece will solve that. That's a fabulous thing. Let's fund, let's fund yeah. that. Yes. And then, and then outside of this, we need some, we need funders who are, who have a map of their, mos of their mosaic that then says, just pour money into the fund investor, rather than making your way through the project plans and doing things individually. You're welcome to do that. Yeah. Like go, go crazy, you know, fill those buckets if you want to, but we've got like a view over this whole thing. And there's a bunch yeah. of different funders sitting around this community um, uh, with grant funding in this case, uh, as opposed to funding of, you know, uh, being paid for services, but that works really well. Um, yeah. I, I coincidentally have in, uh, in Obsidian, I coincidentally, so Obsidian is the markdown editor with which uh, it's pretty easy to edit uh, massive wiki, right? Yep. Uh, Stacy, have you ever seen this? No. Okay. So, um, so Markdown is a, a very, very, very simple form of uh, hypertext uh, markup. Um, let me back up. The World Wide Web is built using HTML. Are you at all familiar with HTML? Okay. So the, hyper, so the hypertext markup language, HTML, is a simple version of a different thing called SGML, the standard generalized markup language. And markup languages are things where um, I put I put these two pound signs in front of the word status. In markdown, that means make this a second level headline. Okay, so if I go to view mode here, see, now I have a first level headline weaving the world, a second level headline in, in bold but smaller text called status, and I don't, and I've got bullets down here. Uh, Phil, lead Jerry. If I go back to edit mode, now you'll see that the, the, the bullets are dashes and the third level, here's a third level headline, is these three things. Markdown is a very simplified version of HTML, which is a very simplified version of SGML. And these are all called kind of markup languages because what they do is you leave little marks in the middle of text. Okay, Thanks. massive, you're, you're welcome. That massive wiki, is a wiki that says, let's just use the simplest possible exchange format for information, which is markdown, markdown files. So these, these files that don't have a lot of, of uh, they don't have, markdown doesn't have anywhere near the, the semantic richness or the expressive richness of markup, of, of hypertext markup language, markup language. That's why markdown markup. Um, but, but this little markdown file, .md is the extension on a markdown file, is readable by just zillions and zillions and zillions of apps out there. It's easily exchanged, and it's the reason why Pete loves it is that is that it, ha it has this uh, fungibility, transactability, exchangeability, interoperability that's fabulous. Um, he we then he then created an OGM wiki. So there is a wiki for OGM uh, in which, and, and this is kind of the file directory of the OGM wiki. Wikis shouldn't really have a file directory, which is a different conversation to have, but um, at the bottom here, there are some templates. And he created some different kinds of templates. And one of the templates, which I think I don't see here, uh, was a project plan. And what I did was uh, some days ago, actually, it's not uh, the moment I thought of Weaving the World, I went and opened up the template and saved it as Weaving the World project plan. So, uh, and all of that explanation, Hank, is to show you that this is the framework that he had for Pete's original project plan. And if we meld that with the five uh, five points that you were just talking about, yeah. we can sort of, you know, be on our way. Yeah. But, you know, what is the current status of the project? Who is handling the standard project yeah. roles? What are they responsible for? Who is the sponsor of the project? Who's actually the ma manager? Who's yeah. on the team? What are their goals? What do they need? Yeah. Um, I don't know how this is different from the people above. Uh, what approach are they taking to do this? What is their work plan and timeline? Yeah. Uh, how are they communicating? So are they using like a Mattermost channel and some email? When, how often do they meet? That kind of thing. Uh, notes and then sub projects. Yeah. What else, what else is related to this? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, so what we can do is we can create a Google doc template, uh, that we can then improve over time, which lets us, um, lets us then. Um, just pick one up, make a template, put it in the right place, and then 
we need to have a, a, a couple different kinds of conversations. One conversation is around each project plan to make it good. Another conversation is the level above to try to yeah. rationalize the different project plans and where there's duplication say, well, are these two the same project? Are they different? Make them, turn them into more mosaics, fit, uh, tiles that would fit into the mosaic, right? Right, um, right. But that, but that then helps us build this whole artifact. Yeah, right. Does that make sense? Stacy? was that too much? No. It okay, good. To me, to me, it makes sense. Uh, and what I was suggesting is simple enough that you could put it out to all of OGM if you want, or all of the people who show up regularly on the different calls. It's a smaller subset and it's simple enough to do. I mean, Pete probably spent uh, hours making that plan you said, or you and Pete together. Right. Uh, I'm thinking of something people can do in a couple of minutes and before they uh, post it on, on the Google Docs, maybe have a glass of wine and uh, in vino veritas and come back to it and post it the next morning. But I mean, it doesn't take a long time. Uh, but that's the way I work. I'm, I'm a type of nerdy guy, which is different than a tech nerd. I'm a process nerd. And I get inspiration from, from, from associating with words. So, I saw words in there and I can associate with them and I get new ideas. And other people are other, have other of those uh, skills or, or, uh, or, uh, or talents. Uh, so some people are visual. So, I mean, maybe a fourth, a fifth, a sixth box should be uh, put your logo on or, or something like that. And then you can associate that way. Right. And then it can get, get out to all the people who are, willing to get involved. And since, uh, as Tracy, as Stacy said uh, earlier, OGM is both the, the owners and the users, and it's creating this thing that everyone can get benefit from. There might be a surprising number of people who don't show up for the calls, uh, but who are interested in joining it. Yeah. At least uh, that, yeah. that would be my... Uh, uh, my uh, logic to it. Thank you. And and my vision, my my visual for this is that there are a whole bunch of attractive, easy to understand things that live above the surface, uh, the show game, the blog, the etc. And then we are kind of trying to entice people to join us, metaphorically underground, weaving together these things and building the artifacts and making making the generative commons making the, the shared nutrient fungus work better, uh, feed us better, right? Yeah. Because we've been starving. Like, like if, I, if, if I mash up the, the fungus metaphor with the, we're, with the amnesia metaphor, that we have no, mem no collective memory, um, we, we've been starving for decades because we're being fed uh, stupid media and we're yep. not able to sort of make this all work together. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, cool, so one of my big frustrations in OGM has been wanting to get to the point where we can share out, hey, let's get practical, let's go build stuff and do stuff. And every time we get kind of close, we're not really close enough to go open the doors and invite everybody in that much. Um, recently, the closest we got was, uh, I just showed you Obsidian, which, I mean, to set up Obsidian and understand how to save documents to the repository on GitHub, where the documents are all being hosted and all that, as Pete said yesterday, is kind of still not transparent and easy. It requires, you know, it's not nearly as easy as cranking up a new document in Google Docs, unfortunately. Um, so every time we get to the point where it's kind of almost ready for the bigger group to just jump in and start playing with, it's not quite enough. So what I'd love to do is figure out what's, the, what's our quickest path to just start iterating on these things, which may mean uh, a shared directory on Google Docs that starts having this, you know, similar templates. And we just replicate, we replicate Pete's template over into a Google Doc, uh, marry that up with what you were thinking about, you know, improve that a couple of times so that we're happy with the template yeah. and then start copying that out to make project plans for the show game for uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, that would make sense. And then, then we can invite other people to come pick up yeah. a template and go do it. The danger then is that we get we, we wind up drowning in, in, in proposals or pitches. We have a, a lot of pent up energy. I mean, we've been doing this for, I don't know, 16 or 18 months now. Um, I think people who really want to get things done have stepped out of the conversation a lot because, um, you know, we were we were frustrating. We're just kind of kicking around talking a lot, um, but they might actually come back in if we start showing that we were building yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then Stacy, I'm I'm trying to figure out this is really kind of for the project plan to turn your written blueprint into more of a project plan to start thinking about, okay, how do we make this a replicable thing that, you know, what is the instruction kit that we point people to that says, here's how to set up the show game for you, right? Uh, it, it, it might need a name and a logo and a focus and a, a rhythm and a, a, a whatever. Like, like you know, uh, Pete likes to say that a project is a project when it has a, a people who are devoted to it, uh, a, a communication rhythm, meaning we meet here on these dates and times, uh, a, a URL or a name or a something like that, and a couple other things. Yeah. Working I, I... title. Yeah, go ahead, Stacy. I'm, th <laughs> I'm thinking of something smaller that I'm doing that might be better for this because I don't see the project game as like one person's project. It, it, it's 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 actually just the opposite. It's more of a house where the projects go inside of it. So I don't I don't know how that would work. Be, it's a different approach. It's more like what would be the elements of this. Like there would have to be a music library. There would have to be um, a directory of experts and what their expertise is in. So how do, the, in. how do the libraries you're describing fit into the show game? So once you have participants, they would go, let's say they're putting together their show, because this is when everybody becomes their own producer. They go into the library and get whatever music they're going to use. That music gets recorded so that people working on like all those different ideas to give musicians credit, they can use that data for their own projects. They can do whatever they want. It has nothing. What one person does has really nothing to do with what somebody else does, but they're working together without even realizing it. So I may be misunderstanding your project a bit because what you just described sounds more like a whole bunch of people curating their own playlists yes, well, of, but... of stuff they like. And when you say game show, I'm actually envisioning, the, the reason I keep coming back to the word host is that I'm thinking Monty Hall and The Price is Right and, and or Cards Against Humanity or Name Your Favorite Game. So when you say game show and we flip it to show game, I'm not thinking that this is a bunch of curated lists at all. Well, yes. Be okay. So my project is really about the pregame show. So the idea is, yes, that's what we're looking to create, but the project is actually in the creating. Yes. For, for both of these ideas, I think the, 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 the making, the doing, the creating is, is like the fun and the project. Um, but, but for me, there's already like millions of people who have playlists on Spotify, for example, because Spotify seems to have eaten the music world or on iMusic or iTunes, except Apple is holding those for ransom because those stay inside of, you know, their, their software. Um, right. so, so there's all the already bazillions of playlists of good music. But this is about putting it together like in one place, but there's more, which is why I think I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to send you this other project, which I think maybe April would be interested in. And it started out as like a writing slash healing project. And it's really more geared. I think it's more geared to women only because we tend to write out our stories more. Um, I'll send it to you because so I was thinking of it in terms of education. Like I thought it was a great writing thing, a great reading comprehension thing, but a, a better way for kids to express themselves. So I've been using my own diary to express myself. So it's a little bit revealing, but I used it as a sample to show how this project would work. Yeah. But it's also, it also ties into other people. Like you'll read at the end of my writing where somebody I mentioned, there's a link and it goes to her page. And when I spoke to her, she's very excited about not just adding her page, but her own writing and then her sprouts. So 
it, it was a few different ideas all connected into one that I thought technology people would be interested in because, you know, and, and people interested in collective intelligence would be interested, but then regular people that are just interested in reading and writing and healing and mental health, <laughs> they'd be interested. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna send you that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. And what you're talking about right now makes me realize also that an important part of what this could be is, is we could really, really, really maybe be helpful with sexism, racism, xenophobia, et cetera, uh, in that when people are journaling, they're journaling their personal experiences and we can weave that into the larger context of historically, why has this been so shitty for so long and who's been trying to fix it and how do the laws fit into this and whatever. I mean, like, like yeah. even, even if what this becomes is like enhanced journaling, Right. Well, it was about building empathy. That was at the that was at the core of it was right. to build empathy, and it starts by stories. Exactly, and and well, what's nice about journals is that they're personal and they attract empathy, yeah. right, by their nature. Um, so that I, I like that. Okay, so I need to I need to step back a little bit from my assumptions about what you mean by by the game show game game show. Um, send me the document. We are over this call time, but this has been again super fruitful and juicy. One, one, one more thing, Jerry. Let me yeah, invite please. you to step back from your assumptions about when it's ready. Uh, one of my favorite stories about uh, prototyping is that the uh, original prototype. Whoop, where are you? In? in front of you. Just hold it in front of you. Then yeah, there it is. You. Right. Can you see what it is? Well, it doesn't matter. It's, it's your smartphone in a in a leather wallet. It's a black box, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a second. Many years ago, but... Uh, Hold it right in front anyway, of me. Doesn't matter. Uh, the first version ever made of the first smartphone ever made was a piece of balsa wood, which had people from IDEO uh, painted on it a couple of buttons and a bit of a screen and they gave it to people and they said, keep this in your pocket or your purse for a week, take it out every once in a while and put your fingers on the so-called buttons and tell us, are there too many buttons? Are they too close together? Do you think the screen is big enough? A prototype is, is an iterative thing that that's good enough right at the beginning, but has to go through a hundred iterative processes. So that's what I'm, I mean, I didn't want to bring that into the conversation yesterday because uh, you, uh, was it Monday? Because there you were talking about such techy stuff. I, the Monday calls are the geekiest calls in the, yeah, in the whole I, week. I, I, I could only half understand the stuff, but I mean, all the stuff that Pete and Mark Antoine and some of the others are talking about are much more advanced versions of the first prototype of also. Um, sort of, but metaphor, they're, they're operating at a semantic, geeky, whatever layer, but some of the stuff that they're talking about is very prototypey as well. Famously, yeah. al famously also, uh, Jeff Hawkins, who was the engineer of the first Palm Pilot, <clears throat> the first Palm Pilot was also a wooden mock-up, exactly. right? And it, it may have been the same project, because I, I think Ideal yeah. probably had some of the design. I think it was the first Palm with Pilot. With the Palm Pilot. Someone um, is ringing the doorbell, so I'm going to have to leave. Okay. But I'll, if you keep going on, I'll catch it on the uh, recording. Sounds great. I think Very should, inspiring call. Guys. I think we should wrap because I have to unload my brain now. <laughs> I put in the chat the um, smaller project that I was talking about. <clears throat> I clicked on the link and I had to request access because uh, you I didn't have it shared out. So you, you will receive a little ping from me saying, oops, please grant me access. All right. And thank you for taking a look at it. Cool. Hey, thank you. Bye, Stacey. Bye.